This thing went down on all fours and started to move across the landing around. I was at the top of the stairs. I came out of one room, and this was at the room in the rocking chair, as it happens. So I was coming around the landing towards me. So I, I ran. <laughs> In this show, I'm going to be talking about the time I had my paranormal supernatural experience when I was scared out of my mind and I was chased out of my house by a poltergeist. I know, right? Stay tuned. So if you know me at all, you know that I don't believe in the supernatural, in ghosts, in spooks. I'm an atheist. I have a healthy scepticism about all things which are based on magic and other such nonsense. However, uh, back in the 90s, I had an experience which to this day, day I still cannot explain was terrifying, made the national news several times and is something that still gets talked about even today. You may have heard of it, you may not, the Tico haunting or the, the Swansea poltergeist. Well, here's my story. So back in, this was back in the very, very early 90s, 91, 92 or something like that. I was really not in a good place. My life was in a bad, bad way. Everything that can, could go wrong was going wrong. I was, I was a mess. Everything was just grim. And a friend and and I, my friend Deborah, we got together one day and we decided let's let's get a house together. Let's I, I don't know why that seemed like the, the solution, but we thought let's do it. Let's move. Let's start you know a new life. Let's share a house. Let's just get on with it. And so we decided to start looking for some places to rent. Looked at a few properties and we found this place in Swansea, high up on the mountain, overlooking Swansea Bay. Fantastic location. Absolutely beautiful. Huge garden. Big house. Detached. It was perfect. It needed a little bit of, well, a lot of renovation. It needed to be completely redecorated, but the landlord agreed that as long as we were doing some renovation work, he wouldn't charge us rent while we were doing that. So it seemed like a fair deal, perfect for us. So that's what we did. We signed the agreements and we, we started, we moved in. Well, I say moved in, we uh, started to prepare to strip and redecorate this house. And the very first thing we had to do was get some light bulbs. <laughs> and so on the first day, it was getting dark. And this is the thing. And I mean, you know, things were odd right from the very beginning. I went to the to the nearby to a nearby shop, picked up some light bulbs. Deborah was downstairs doing things. I went upstairs to put the bulbs in. And there was one room in particular. It was a beautiful room. It was I think it was like the master bedroom. It had a big bay window. And there was some there was quite a lot of old furniture had been left in the house. In this particular room I had a rocking chair and an old rocking chair. And so I started changing the light the light bulb in the ceiling. And as I was changing the bulb, Deborah had come upstairs and she grabbed me from behind and uh, went to tickle me. So I was like, get off and I'm trying to change the light bulb be crazy except she wasn't actually there there was nobody there so i, I couldn't explain that i just put it aside to i don't know you know like one of those things i thought oh, that was weird i could have sworn deborah was just grabbing me and trying to tickle me but okay so, so that happened we started we, we bought wallpaper and paint and you know all the tools that you need to renovate a house and we got on with it and a couple of days passed and everything seemed fine although there was this really it was, it was like this this almost like a, not a food but um i would move the rocking chair to one side of the room and then deborah would move it to the other side of the room and um you know because i was trying to i was decorating that particular room and i can remember one day i said why do you keep moving the rocking chair <laughs> and she's like what so the, the rocking chair in the bedroom, I keep moving it because I'm trying to, you know, get the trestle tables and stuff to do the papering. And she was like, I haven't moved the rocking chair. <laughs> do, 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 do. Creepy. And so, yeah, it turns out, I don't know who was moving the rocking chair, but I had to keep moving it. But it was just nothing. I didn't really, I just thought, just thought it was odd. Well, some days passed and we were really getting stuck into it. And one day, um, Deborah had gone over to the house early and I went over later, sort of mid-morning, closer to lunchtime even, because I had to stop at the DIY store on the way to pick up some more supplies, paint and wallpaper and what have you. And so I got to the house and walked down the drive and opened the front door and went in. Deborah, who was in the kitchen, looked at me with this really odd look and she was like, well, where have you been? Been to the DIY store to get some supplies. She goes, oh, how long have you been there? Just come from there. I was there all morning, you know, getting stuff. She goes, oh, who's upstairs then? <laughs> And I was with a friend at the time, I brought some help with me. So we were like, oh, what the hell, that like, like a tramp or somebody, a burglar, I don't know. So I went upstairs, I was looking around, nobody was upstairs. No windows had been opened, nothing. But Deborah had been speaking to somebody all morning. She thought she'd been talking to me working upstairs. She knew she was talking to me upstairs. And she was like really taken aback by this because there was nobody upstairs. Now I didn't know if she was pranking me or I didn't know what to think about this. It was a little bit odd. 
And then over over the time we started decorating and getting on with the house and just creepy things kept happening. There was one one thing in particular which was really strange. And we still talk about this. It's like, were we making this up? Were we just imagining this? We're really both rational. We're both atheists, okay? But we were able to have these bizarre mind powers. If you, if you concentrated on someone, you could make them look at you and things while we were in the house. If there was somebody working in the garden or vice versa, you could think about them and you could make them look at you straight away over and over and over again it became like a running joke we were just messing with people all the time it was so bizarre and then um, the garden was huge but it was a lot of work to be done we were, i was chopping it down for days i had this really heavy industrial stuff in and we just dig it all up and the decorating continued but creepy weird things started happening like you'd be in the house and then you'd hear like what sounded like children playing upstairs and a ball bouncing down the stairs like boom 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 but nothing would be there and, and, and footsteps running down the stairs and then running back up again and laughing and oh it was weird okay and then um you'd be in the room and if anywhere with a mirror and you'd see someone behind you just in the corner of your eye you just go to look and it disappear and it wouldn't even like it would, there was nothing there you would just see for a fraction of a second like a shadow going and in the corners of the room, always in the corners of the room, you would see either like something there, you'd become aware of there being something standing in the corners of the room, like looking at you. And you'd look and it would vanish. It was the weirdest thing. Or you'd see somebody coming into the room behind you with an open door. Um, and it was th all the upstairs rooms used to do this. And you'd, be, you'd look and it'd be nobody there. One day we were outside talking, you know, and it was just it was just creepy. It was just really strange things. And you couldn't, and you just, you get over it and think, oh, it's just nothing. It's just imagination. But at the back of my mind, you're like, this is weird. This is, I can't put my finger on this. So we were talking to the next door neighbours and they said, are you settling in? Is everything okay? And we said, yeah, it's fine. Really creepy place though. Really strange things keep happening. And they looked at each other and they were like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, well, it's been lots of students have stayed there and there were some devil worshippers there for a while. <laughs> really. And they were doing lots of seances and Ouija boards. I'm like, really? <sighs> okay, but whatever. And they were very, very full on religious. Lovely, lovely people. Their beautiful car, beautiful house, you know, but also very religious. And they were telling us about, you know, these spirits and things and ghosts that they believed were in the house for this. And this was just, come on, guys. But it was interesting that they said this after we'd been experiencing weird things. We'd find that people would come over and the conversation the mood would get really dark very quickly cold and the house was always freezing heating could be on full you couldn't touch the radiator but the rooms would never get warm it was really frustrating and people would come over to hang out with you and they, everyone would just get down and down and by within about half an hour nobody would everyone was quiet and sullen and people would get snappy and would argue and then as soon as you'd leave the house everyone thought oh I feel so much better what the heck just happened and you'd feel better as you left the house it was the craziest thing and then um it got to the point where deborah had stopped staying there nobody wanted to stay there and i was there one day on my own and i didn't really like it then i had a i was a, a huge radio enthusiast at the time i was i had a massive um a big radio a cb radio and 10 meter and 11 meter set up there and so and i and because of the location high up on a mountain i had a huge antenna in the garden it was fantastic and so i was there one evening and i'd been upstairs i changed my clothes and i was aware that there was something outside the bedroom door on the landing the other side I just caught something in the corner of my eye and there's like a big like you go up the stairs it's a big wide you know landing so I went just to look and there was this shadowy like a large adult sized shadow and as it saw me and I saw it and I don't I, even saying these words I feel like I'm a mental I need to have help or something because this is so it sounds insane me even saying it this thing went down on all fours and started to move across the landing around and I was at the top of the stairs I coming out of one room and this was the room in the rocking chair as it happens so I was coming around the landing towards me so I, I ran I ran down the stairs I was starting to freak out I was panicking I was hyperventilating I bolted into the living room that's where my car keys were I wanted to get out of there but this thing whatever this was I was aware that it had just come right behind me and I'd stopped it by the door this sounds so insane even saying this and I was in the living room and I was in tears and I was panicking and to, and to quote Ghostbusters I was terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought at this point I didn't know what to do the only way to get out to the back door or the front door was out into the hall and that's where this thing this shadow thing had just 
came after me down the stairs. So I went out through the, through the living room window, I opened the living room window and I, and I climbed through the window into the garden and then ran around the side of the house and left for the night, terrified. And so the following day, I'd been talking, I'd talked to Deborah about this. And a lot of things, a lot of things like culminated all at the same time, things were escalating. And so we spoke about it and the neighbors had said, look, if it ever, if it, if it ever gets too much for you, just come and talk to us and we'll see what we can do. And at this point, Deborah was in the house. She was in the kitchen, and then the kitchen window caught fire. The, 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 the window frame, it was like a Hollywood scene. Flames coming out of the window in the kitchen. And there were things, it seemed as if it was really focused on Deborah, unless there was, a, unless if she wasn't there, it would be anybody else was fair game. But if it was Deborah in the house, she'd be the target of almost all of this crazy stuff that was going on. So, and just noises and just really like anger, these really strange, you know, feelings and, and sensations sensations in the window frame and we were throwing water over this window frame and I swear when the flames were out there wasn't a mark on the window frame I, 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 I don't know whether it was gas coming out or something I've no idea how this could happen but anywho so many crazy things started happening now and even just talking about them right now makes me feel like like a nuts examples like people people we hadn't told would say things like oh I called by last night um why didn't you answer and I'd be like oh we weren't there we were out there was no, nobody home and they're like, but, you, but, but I could see you. I could see you upstairs in the landing window looking down at us. Well, somebody was in looking at us because I could see the shadow looking at us. And we'd have things like that. People would say, people would say they could, there were people in the house when we weren't there. They'd see shadows moving in the house. And um, something else started happening, as well as having this odd perception of like these shadowy forms in the corners of the room, sometimes you'd have a sensation of a buzzing noise and it would become very cold. And often it would happen, not so much with me, but with Deborah. So she would come into a room and shortly afterwards, the room would become extra cold. Like you'd feel a little breeze from nowhere we had a friend of mine who was a psychic came over he was really like wow and to be fair it was very bizarre and I know how cold reading works now and I know how psychics operate now at the time I didn't so full disclosure I didn't really know what I was looking for at this point to however there were a few of us there and there was very much a and because the landing window was quite it was like a tall like a yellowy window so you couldn't see into it clearly but you could certainly see people there's like a stair case and like a, a big glazed section going up the stairs which you could see from the front of the house and you could certainly see people moving up and down the stairs from outside and you would absolutely see the silhouette or the shadow of somebody watching you coming up and down the drive and it was all kinds of different bonkers things it was like everyone's interpretation of a haunted house all mashed into one place it was nuts we spoke to the neighbours and they said, OK, we'll get somebody from the church around to come and help. We'll arrange for some, some priests to come and perform an exorcism. <laughs> and I'm like, what? But I'm also, I'm, I'm also experiencing things I don't know how to process. I don't know how, I don't have the, this doesn't happen, you know? So I don't know what to do. So I'm like, OK, and I'm, uh, let's just, all right, let's just do this. Because I don't know. I don't, this is a so far out of anything I've experienced before. I'm like, yeah, crack on to do that. So the, it's in the afternoon, there's a few, it's a really miserable day. It's raining and it's really unpleasant. And um, there's a couple of us there but some friends over as well just and they're all in it and the local media are, are, everyone's talking about this haunted house now in Swansea it's becoming especially because we're on the CB as well which was like the you know um, Facebook of its day so everyone knows about this crazy haunted house and um, so we're standing in the living room and this is when suddenly there's this deep growl um, a, a a malevolent demonic I can't even do it justice but imagine like a lion or a, or a big cat that's got that back of its throat, I'm going to kill you so much. And it's growling. And we are losing our crap. This is coming from everywhere around us. It's like the best surround sound you've ever heard. And suddenly there is a gigantic crash from the kitchen. And this sounds insane. Even thinking about what happened next sounds absolutely bonkers. We open the door, all nervous, all scared as to what's going on. And in the kitchen, there's two, I said I was working on the garden. There's all these garden tools. I was keeping them in a cupboard in the kitchen. The cupboard door is opened. These garden tools are spread across the floor 
floor in the kitchen, some of them to the point where they're embedded in the skirting board, the other side of the cupboard they were in, all over the place. And they're sharp. And there are slugs coming out of the walls of the cupboard where these tools were kept. Like, loads of them. It sounds insane. I feel like I'm insane even talking about this. And we'll, we'll occasionally we'll catch up and it's like, this happened, right? We aren't like, this wasn't some hallucination that we all had and we just imagined. And we're like, yeah, I know. We were all there. With that, there was a knock at the door. And we, well, we reckon that at about the time the growling started and the crash was roughly the same time it would take someone to arrive at the drive of the house, come down the path and knock the front door. We opened the door and there was two priests in full regalia, regalia, very priesty looking. And I'm not sure, I, I didn't know, I don't even sure what, what religion these people were from, but they come into the house and they're like, oh, right. Hi, you know, we've come. And they're talking to us about they've just come from a house where there was a young girl, like a three-year-old or a four-year-old, throwing a bed at her parents or something. It's like, what? This, I don't know. I can't even. They start the exorcism. And there's a lot of kumbayas going on here, I'll be honest with you. There's lots of, you know, and they're going through room by room. And there's this one room that they go into, and they almost, like, they pause before they go in. And they, like, exchange like, an, an odd glance, which is odd. And they do them, we do some more kumbayas together, and lots of, you know, casting out and what have you as they can we go to the room and we're going upstairs and there's like and there's like there is like a cabinet in this room and they say you know that cabinet in that room do you need to keep that do you want that a lot of the furniture was left in the house as i was to do with what we wish and it was yeah burn it even though we're exercising the whole house burn that cabinet and we hadn't realized but this room that the cabinet is in we had never used we'd kept the vacuum cleaner in there and by kept the vacuum cleaner in there this was a case of opening the door reaching in to put the vacuum cleaner in and then closing the door and we hadn't even realized how much we hated this room everyone hated this room and we were like yeah you're vacuum cleaner oh, get it and then going to the cleaning so they continue with the exorcism and it's I swear to you, this is like a Hollywood movie. It's raining, there's like a thunderstorm going on, and it's all very dramatic with like the, the priestly stuff is going on, and we're all holding hands and exercising the, the, the evil demons back to whence they came, and it's bonkers. And as they finish, as they finish the, um, the finale of the exorcism, there is an almighty crash from downstairs. The front door opens and slams. And it, in my mind, there's like thunder and lightning going off too. There might not have been, but it's bonkers, okay? We go downstairs, the front door is opened and slammed and it's broken several panes of glass in the front door. It's beat itself up. And that cabinet that was in that, the room we didn't like is lying face down in the middle of the floor with its doors open. So um, needless to say, we rapidly remove it from the house and drop it on a bonfire that I've been happily building in the garden from all the garden debris and um, the priests wrap up and they say thank you you know if you need anything just but I think we should be good now and uh, the heating the heating side working at that person the house became warm as soon as they had finished <laughs> I don't know you know I set fire to the bonfire and this thing burned blue for about an hour on the bonfire unmarked it was as if it was just laughing at me on the fire going come at me bitch what are you gonna do and I'm like come burn damn you and I could have put it back in the house after like an hour and it would have been fine <laughs> it was unmarked it must have been the best varnish ever on this thing it just burned and burned and burned and eventually after about an hour it started to collapse and it became ash but it just burned blue for ages it was nuts at this point, we the exorcism was done, the house was done, and we left. <laughs> we didn't go back after that. That was the end. We thought, you know what? Yeah, it's all good now, but I think we've got our closure. Don't know. I have no idea. I can't explain any of that. And you know, the funny thing is, um, I think Deborah went back there a couple of years later just to knock to see if other people there experienced anything. And no, everything was fine. It was just a normal house, a normal nice house at this point. But I went on a campaign after that then. I went to do spiritualist churches in various religions and I really got into religion as a result. I didn't believe any of it, I was just looking for answers. All I found after that were just fakes, fakes, faith healers, fake psychics, fake mediums, bull, 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 bull. So I became really kind of hostile to religion at this point. I couldn't find any answers for what had happened. Looking back now, I would love to be able to go back with my own eyes now without the emotional distress I was in at the time with everything else that was going on in my life to try to you know, rationalize it. I still can't answer it, but I'd love to be able to go back to it with, a, with, my, with my head from today to, to try to explain and you know work out exactly what I saw. So that's my spooky Halloween poltergeist story from, gosh, 30 years ago nearly. That's pretty 
pretty much it. As always, what do you think? Leave your comments below. What are your spooky tales? I'd love to know what crazy things you can't explain that's happened. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button. But if you like it, I would love you to hit that like button. As ever, share. If you, uh, if you like this sort of content, you want to see more of what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that alarm bell to be kept informed of the stuff that I put out. Popping up over there is the last video I recorded and below that is the one YouTube thinks you should watch next. Sometimes it's the same one. YouTube does odd things like this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my little story time video and I will see you in the very next show. Thank you so much. Bye bye.